up again this week. Good to see you here tonight. 285. Let's stand and sing. I found a friend in Jesus, the lily of the valley. Let's all stand, please, as we sing. Page number 285. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's never in to me. He's a very something thousand to my soul. The lily of the valley. And I sing all I need to live to make me fully whole. In sorrow is my comfort.
on Sunday and your Saturday had a good week. I, I feel like we had a tremendous week last week in, in, uh, in, in our camp and uh, with, the, with the weather and everything like it was, had a really good turnout, I believe. And, and so I, I, I beg you and I plead with you to go out and compel our lost folks that you know to come and get under this old tabernacle, amen, and, and uh, hear the man of God bring us a message each and every night, Brother Travis Parker, appreciate him being here, tremendous man of God, I'm looking so forward to what God is going to uh, give him to feed us and, and maybe uh, see some souls saved. Well, we got to get them here, got to get them here, maybe you're here tonight lost in your sins, you're in the right place, amen, to be born again. I, I pray for you right now that God will deal with your heart. Now, pastors, remember this Friday right after the service, I need to see you down here uh, on stage. Uh, so let's don't drag around. Let's get on down here after the Friday service. We're going to come down here and have a quick meeting, amen, on some things I give out last week. So. Uh, speak to us. If there's one lost none, uh, God may you work and minister. God help us tonight. And we'll give you all the praise, honor, and glory. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
remains the same for you. So he's never spelled you. Amen. 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 Just stand and thank you for praising that. Amen. No matter what you do. Amen.
Our dear Holy Father, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be here tonight, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the good day that you've given us, Lord. Thank you for the weather that you've blessed us with, Lord, for this camp meeting, Lord. I thank you for this camp meeting, Lord. I'm yes. thankful, Lord, for old-time religion, Lord. Yes. Thankful, Lord, that there's still some people in Pickens County, Lord, that care about the church, Lord, that care about the love of Jesus, Lord, and come out, Lord, to worship you. Lord, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, to let go, Lord. Let God have his willing way tonight, Lord. I pray that you'd help us, Lord, to set aside the things of the world, Lord, just to focus our minds in on Jesus for just a little while. Lord, while we're here tonight, Lord, I pray that you bless the preacher. Lord, I pray that you give him power and unction. Lord, I, I pray that you'd help, Lord, the Holy Ghost to fall down upon this place. Lord, I pray that you'd help, Lord, us to have Holy Ghost conviction. Lord, if there's one here that's lost tonight, Lord, I pray that you'd reach their heart, Lord, that they'd come to Jesus, Lord. We thank you for all that you do, Lord. I pray that you bless this offering tonight. Bless the gift of the giver, Lord. We'll thank you and praise you for everything. In Jesus' most wonderful and precious holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brother Christian Posey, he's going to sing a couple of bars right before the message tonight, so you worship as you sing. times life when burdens get me down and it seems that a friend cannot be found when it seems I'm in this valley all alone count on you
watched. I watched it. I watched Christian just get better and better and better through the years. They made it just mature into a fine singer, musician, yeah. loves the Lord. Amen. Appreciate these young men and women uh, giving their heart to the Lord, being used right. uh, at a young age. Amen. A lot of times people don't get started till they get on to my age and all that youth is gone. Amen. Here we got some here uh, starting out right and trying to stay right. Amen. Don't pray for them. Amen. That would, would love this entire day. Amen. We're going to brag on you. Amen. We're going to lift you up to the Lord. Thank you for doing that. Amen. I'm going to ask a, a dear friend of mine, Brother Travis Parker.
The Bible said, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Verse number 10 of this chapter ends with water. And in chapter number 3, we see in verse number 2, there is a mention of that fire, that bush that was consumed with fire. And I want to preach tonight for a few moments, if the Lord will help me, on between the water and the fire. Now, in these verses that I read in your hearing tonight, Moses is grown. And 40 years have passed since he was placed in the water. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter number 7 that he is full 40 years old. He's 40 years from the water. Moses is exactly 40 years from the bush. That puts Moses in these verses that I read in your hearing tonight right in the middle. He's 40 years from the water. He is 40 years from the fire. It will be another 40 from these verses that I read where he will be on the back side of the desert. And so I want to try to emphasize the place where Moses is. He is in between. I don't know about you tonight, but I know for myself there's been times in my life when I have been in between. Moses is between something miraculous. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? Verse number 10 talks about how he was placed into that water and how that Pharaoh's daughter came and drew him out of that water. That was something that was miraculous. His mother placed him in that water and by the providence of God, Pharaoh's daughter drew him out. Right. He should have been consumed. He should have been destroyed, but thank God, God put a hedge about him. And how miraculous that was. You and I have had things happen in our life, you can testify, and it was miraculous. I mean, they, there was no way of explaining it, but it was of God Almighty. There's no other way that it could have happened except God had it done something. Something miraculous. And then, then on the other side, there's something mysterious. Well, that fire was mysterious, wasn't it? As a matter of fact, the Bible says in chapter 3, at verse number 3, and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Not that a bush was on fire, but that that bush burned and was not consumed. Amen. Now that's mysterious. That's only only God could have done that. Amen. Only God could have could have struck a fire in the backside of that desert and and uh, and the bush not be consumed. There's something miraculous. Well, I've come to help you tonight. And there's something mysterious. Moses is right in between these two things. Moses is in between two drawings. The Bible said in chapter number 2 and verse number 10 that Pharaoh's daughter drew him out of the water. And then in chapter number 3, the Bible, the, the Bible tells us in verse number 5, draw not nigh hither. He's in between two drones. Boy, he's right in the middle. I'm, I'm preaching to people tonight, and I'm preaching to preachers that knows what it is to be right in the middle. Not, re not really something uh, uh, miraculous going on. Uh, not really something mysterious going on. But you're right in the middle. You're in the between. 
to say this as it is, not only physically but spiritually tonight, we're all in between. I'm not where I used to be. Thank God tonight I'm not where I'm going to be. Amen. I'm in between. I, I'm thankful tonight that I am not what I used to be, but I want to praise God tonight that I am not what I'm going to be. We're all in between tonight. What that is, spiritually speaking, is also physically speaking. Now, let me say a few things tonight. Get you a mind where I'm going. I, I, I think about Moses in that water, and, and that was something miraculous. But that was how God preserved Moses' life. Yes, that was his preservation. Yes, God Almighty had preserved Moses' life by being put into that ark and placed into that river. Yeah. He had proved his mother and daddy could no longer hide him. Yeah. And it took time for them to finally push him out in that, in that river and push him out in them flags. And uh, oh my God, can you imagine uh, uh, what had been going on in the unseen world? Uh, here's little baby Moses floating down that river but there's a God in heaven that's preserving his life. Oh, I know the devil would have loved to have taken him out. But I wish I had somebody that say hallelujah. I'm glad the Lord has preserved our lives. I thank God for the preservation of God tonight. God preserving our lives. What was destruction to all the others was deliverance to Moses. Hallelujah, the Lord knows how to preserve our lives tonight. What I'm trying to say is we'd have been dead a long time ago had it not been for God. Oh, I bless you.
read your Bible tonight, verse number 11. The Bible said, and it came to pass in those days. When Moses was grown, he's a 40-year-old man. He's a grown man. That he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren. I say this about Moses tonight and this trouble. He was no stranger to trouble. You think about the trouble that Moses was born into. Yeah. Moses knew something about trouble. He was raised around trouble. Yeah. Listen tonight. The Bible tells us man is few days and full of trouble. Yeah. There's all kind of there's trouble on every hand tonight. Yeah. I'm telling you, I ain't never seen the trouble that we're experiencing in these days. Amen. 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 This trouble would cause him to confirm his person. He lived around this trouble. That, that trouble that I'm talking about, that Moses is dealing with here, and, and we have trouble that is without, and man, that's difficult to deal with. Well, that trouble that is without is hard. But what about that trouble that is within us? We talk a lot about that trouble that is without us. But I'm preaching to people tonight that knows what it is to have trouble on the inside. Trouble and pressure that, that's, that's on the inside of all of us. And Moses is dealing not with, not with trouble on the outside. When Moses looks, Moses sees that Egyptian, and Moses sees that Hebrew, and they are striving one against the other. You know what that does? That causes Moses to identify that there's trouble on the inside of him. He's 40 years old. He's 40 years old, and what he saw on the outside was indicative of what was going on on the inside of him. He was a child of a slave. Yet he was the son of a queen. Now, brother and sister, I want to tell you that right there and cause you to have some conflict on the inside of you. Trying to figure out who am I? Am I an Egyptian or am I a Hebrew? I'm dressed up like an Egyptian. I live like an Egyptian. But I love like a Hebrew. I, I got likings like a Hebrew. I, what am I? Who am I? And, and Moses is having to confirm that person who he is. Forty years old. Moses is a grown man. They're still having little boy issues. You preachers preach to people all the time that is, that is grown people, yet they do not know who they are, don't know where they belong. Oh, happy day. I'm glad for the day that it was revealed unto me exactly who I am. You know who I am? I'm Travis Parker, amen. And that's who God called. And that's who God's going to use. And oh, how we need to find out who we are tonight. That trouble, that trouble caused him to confirm who he is as a person. He has is, he is grown, and, and the Bible tells us that he, had, he was grown. And he went out and looked upon the burdens of his brethren. I don't believe this is the first time that there was, there was any kind of confrontation. But this is the first time that Moses took any action. You know what he's doing? He's coming into that place that Hebrews talks about. In Hebrews chapter number 11 and verse number 24, the Bible said, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer at affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You know what Moses is having to do? He's having to make a choice. He's having to make a decision. And we're living in a day and hour that's going to demand upon us to make a choice. Are we going to live for God? Are we going to serve God? Or are we going to live for the world? Are we going to serve the world? By God, we need to make up our minds. time for Moses to decide. And the Bible said, and when he looked this way, verse number 
acting before his time and it falls to pieces. The Bible says that he hid him in the sand. In other words, they, there come a time in Moses' life when he had to make a decision who he was, who, whose side was, was he on. The Egyptian was smiting the Hebrew and Moses was not going to stand out of by any longer. God help us tonight to understand exactly who we are. You say, preach, I don't understand what you're trying to say. People are so confused about who they are. That's why they'll come to church and they'll be one way and then they'll walk out into the world and they'll be absolutely another way. I'm trying to tell us tonight, it is time that we make up our mind. I'm going to serve the Lord. person. I want to say something not only about that trouble that caused him to confirm his person, but I want to say something about the talk that caused him to confront his past. Watch what your Bible says in verse number 13. The Bible said, and when he went out the second day, the next day, the day after the, the day after the Egyptian and the Hebrew what was, was uh, contending one with another, the next day he went out, and behold, two men of the Hebrews drove together. Well, it's one thing to see the world and, and, and the church striving together. But how many of you would agree it's a whole different thing when the church goes fighting the church. Moses walked down, and the day before he saw the Egyptian smiling the Hebrew, but now he goes out and there's a Hebrew and a Hebrew, and they're fighting and they're striving one with another. And isn't that sad? Oh my, uh, if there's ever been a day that we need to hide together, if there's ever been a day that we need to come together, it's this day in which we live. God help us to lay down all the other things and get our mind and our heart upon God. There was a there was a Hebrew and Hebrew that was striving together. Evidently Moses was able, able to recognize and realize the one that was in the wrong. And he went to that one that was in the wrong and said, Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And this is what the one that was in the wrong said. Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Well, what he didn't know was he was declaring Moses' own destiny. Out of the mouth of his enemy, he was speaking Moses' own destiny. He didn't know it, but that's what he was doing. He was describing what Moses was. The Bible said, now watch this, I'm talking about the talk. He said, who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killedest the Egyptian? You know what that done to Moses? That pointed him back to yesterday. That pointed him back to his past. That caused him to reflect upon what had happened. You know what Moses did was wrong. Yeah. But Moses, what Moses did cannot be held up for. He killed a man. Yeah. But that was in his past. As a matter of fact, it was buried. Yeah. And you and I know people tonight that want to go and dig up our past. Yeah. Aren't you glad, thank God, that if it's under the blood tonight, yeah. it's gone.
just don't want to be helped. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're trying your best to help somebody that just don't want to be helped. Moses is trying to intervene. Moses is trying to help these two Hebrews that, that are striving and they lash out against him. Oh, my Lord, Brother Ashley, I'm glad, thank God, somebody has tried to help me. I, all of my and all of my mess ups and all of my failures. Thank God for somebody that has tried to help my life. Amen. You got a preacher tonight, you ought to thank God for him and be standing up preaching the word of God and trying to lead you in the right way. Don't you refuse that help. Don't say no to that help. Don't lash out against that man of God. My God, he's got something that I help. Well, that talk caused him to confront his past. I thought about uh, these two Hebrews that was striving one with another. They were slaves. Don't you know these two men knew what it was to be abused? This world is not for us tonight, church. This world is not for this camp tonight. You know what they want to do? They want to cause harm. They want to cause damage. They want to try to destroy and tear down everything that exalts the name of God. They're against it tonight. And we take enough abuse from the world. God help us not to abuse each other. Why the world? Why the world do I want to go out there in the world and, and have to endure all of the abuse of the world and then get around my brothers and sisters and, and go to fussing and fighting? And, and, hey, I've been abused enough. When I come to God's house, I don't want to fight. I, I want somebody to feed me. I want somebody to help me. I want somebody to encourage me. Amen. God help us. That's good preaching. Causes him to confront his past. Yeah. There will be always those that want to dig up. Get in your past. Get in your yesterday. Ain't that right? That's what he said. He got in his yesterday. I'm preaching to people tonight. You may have already forgot where you were. But some of you ain't always been in the house of God. And some of you ain't always had a King James Bible. And some of you ain't always wanted to come to camp meeting. Amen. But I'm glad what was in my yesterday. I'm not going to let it affect my today. I'm glad she's gone tonight. It's in my past. And I am glad it's there. trouble that caused him to confirm his person who he was. And I'm preaching, I'm preaching to some young people tonight that need to understand who they are. Right. 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 Who did God make me to be? That's why that's why our young people are hanging in closets and that's why they're blowing their brains out tonight. It's because they're confused in their own mind and in their own heart exactly who they are. Trouble that caused him to confirm his person, the talk that caused him to confront his past. Brother Posey, you come on and close with this tonight. I want to say something about the threat that caused him to conform to his purpose. The Bible said in verse number 15, Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought 
to slay Moses. Don't you know that Moses heard about that? He's threatening his life. He's seeking to slay Moses. The same God that protected Moses down there in that river is the same God that's going to deliver him out of the hands of Pharaoh. You know why? Because God has a purpose for his life. God has a purpose for Moses' life. And God has a purpose for your life. God has a purpose for my life tonight. If he didn't, the night we got saved, he'd have took us out of here. God has a purpose tonight.
some of you know what it is to have that past grow up, dug up and thrown in your face. I wonder if you want to come tonight and get around this all. Times when I when burdens get me down, preachers, and it seems Wait that a friend cannot be found. When it's young people, get on this altar and find out who you are. Alone, how God did you? Challenge us to know who we are. Say about it. He could have said it all. Yes. saved under this tabernacle. I don't know. I ain't got a head count tonight. Thank God because of 200 people here tonight. You know, if you bring one lost person with you tomorrow night, or let's just 
get it down to families that's here. They eat family. Let's say 50 families here. That family will bring a lost person tomorrow night. There'll be 50 lost people, people that need Jesus here tonight, tomorrow night. I'm asking you to get out, bring somebody with you. And now I'm also going to ask you if you got a blessing out of the meeting tonight, if you got a blessing out of Brother Parker, I'll bring that message and he's helped you tonight. Don't you get on the Facebook. And get, I don't like Facebook, but you get on that telephone, you get on that cell phone and tell your, your, uh, the members of your church, hey, come out to camp me. You know how, how far uh, uh, gets bigger, how a camp gets bigger is you get busy. Right. You get busy. Call your neighbor up that sits with you on the pew or, or sits in the, in the choir if you listen to them sing or whatever. Say, so, hey, that camp, no matter where we're in or not, good weather. we got plenty of room outside. we got plenty of room inside. All right. All hearts and minds clear. Well, part of that tremendous man. In my in my, my soul. And I've seen many come along tonight. Amen. I heard people praying out in the, in the, in the congregation. Man, that's a blessing. He come to help us. What he say? Did you get some help tonight? Amen. 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 7.30 tomorrow night. Amen. You come a little early, try to find your place. Amen. I like it when I see people in here. Amen. I like to see them coming in. It's a good place to be. All right, Brother Christian, I appreciate that. Brothers, for y'all playing that invitation. It was special. Amen. All right, we'll be dismissed right now. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father. And I thank you, God, for all your many blessings. And I thank you, dear God, for, for the message that was preached to us tonight. Lord, I pray bless him, Lord, as he goes home. And, and those that's traveling with him, keep him safe. Lord, help, help his heart be prepared for tomorrow night. Lord, fill him with your goodness. Fill him with your spirit. Give him direction, Lord, for the camp tomorrow night. Lord, as he preaches to us. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you be Brother Steve as he directs the, the singing, Lord. Put the right people in the right place, Lord, to, uh, to help us, Lord, to, uh, to worship in, in the music part, to worship in the, in the preaching part. Lord, we're to all come to the end, Lord God, that we find ourselves getting help. Lord, I thank you for this camp. I ask you, Lord, to bless it, Lord, for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you this week. Thank you.